Good morning everyone, I'm Sir Franz and welcome to our lesson on lipogenesis or the synthesis of fatty acids. Lipogenesis specifically creates palmitic acid in human or mammalian cells. It occurs in the cytosol of many different cells, for example, liver cells, kidney, brain, lung, mammary gland, for example, in the creation of milk for a newborn, and in adipose tissue. We use acetyl coenzyme A and combine it with other molecules of acetyl coenzyme A to form palmitic acid, a 16-carbon long fatty acid. And the slowest step is actually the carboxylation of acetyl coenzyme A. In carboxylation, we attach a molecule of carbon dioxide to acetyl coenzyme A, a 2 carbon fatty acid, to form the intermediate malonyl coenzyme A, which is a 3 carbon fatty acid. Since this is the slowest step, acetyl coenzyme A carboxylation is also the rate limiting step and an important point for regulation, which means the speed of lipogenesis depends on the activity of acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. The following slides will tell us the important steps of the synthesis of fatty acids. The first is the transport of acetyl coenzyme A to the cytosol. Mitochondrial acetyl coenzyme A is transported into the cytosol using the citrate shuttle. First, remember that acetyl coenzyme A can come from many different sources. For example, pyruvate, which is the product of glycolysis, would have to undergo an intermediate step to form acetyl coenzyme A. And that is through the action of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Acetyl coenzyme A is formed in the mitochondrion, but remember that lipogenesis or the synthesis of fatty acids occur in the cytosol. So there has to be a way for us to transfer acetyl CoA from the mitochondrion into the cytosol. So turn your attention in the image below. You have here um, a sample section of the mitochondrion. At the top of the image, to orient you, is the mitochondrial matrix, where acetyl coenzyme A is found. Acetyl coenzyme A in the mitochondrial matrix undergoes synthesis of citrate by fusing with oxaloacetate through the Krebs cycle. So, through the Krebs cycle and the action of citrate synthase, we have synthesized citrate from acetyl coenzyme A. Next, citrate that is synthesized through the Krebs cycle will then be able to pass into the cytosol through a citrate transporter. So that means that citrate in the mitochondrion will be taken care of by a particular and specific transporter holding the citrate and transferring it into the cytosol. Once in the cytosol, citrate will undergo the reverse reaction through citrate lyase where instead of citrate being formed, citrate is broken down. So initially in the mitochondrial matrix, we formed citrate, but in the cytosol, we break the citrate down to release the constituents, which are oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme. Through this step, we have transferred acetyl coenzyme A initially in the mitochondrial matrix and now transferring it into the cytosol. The next step would be to produce malonyl coenzyme A. We have effectively transferred acetyl coenzyme A from the matrix now into the cytosol. The next step would be to carboxylate or add a molecule of carbon dioxide to acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A is converted to malonyl CoA, and again the enzyme is 
acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. This enzyme requires biotin or vitamin B7. This is the rate limiting step of lipogenesis, which means it's the slowest step. This step is activated by citrate and insulin. So what does that mean? If we have lots of levels of citrate, which indirectly tells us that there are lots of acetyl coenzyme A in the cell, it will stimulate lipogenesis. If we have insulin, which is secreted after a meal, which is the primary anabolic hormone and tells the body that you have food and you can store the food, lipogenesis will be stimulated. Lipogenesis and acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase are inhibited by glucagon and epinephrine, which are counter-regulatory hormones present only when the cell and the body does not have enough energy stores. So let's turn our attention to the diagram above. Acetyl coenzyme A combines with bicarbonate. This is catalyzed by acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase through the action of a molecule or the, or the um, hydrolysis of a molecule of adenosine triphosphate we can then form malonyl coenzyme A, simply attaching a molecule of carbon dioxide to the terminal methyl group. Next, after we have produced malonyl coenzyme A, it is now time to elongate the fatty acid into palmitic acid. Fatty acids are assembled by the complex enzyme fatty acid synthase. So fatty acid synthase is actually a large enzyme with different activities per area of the enzyme. So it's a complex, it's an enzyme complex. So the fatty acids that undergo elongation are held by the fatty acid enzyme um, complex in different positions. So acetyl coenzyme A is used as a primer, and you can see acetyl coenzyme A in number one. And all the subsequent carbon units are added via malonyl coenzyme A. So again, acetyl coenzyme A is no in number one, and malonyl coenzyme A, which holds carboxyl groups, is in number two. You observe here that in number one, you have a cysteine residue, that's an amino acid, and in number two, you have pan or panthotenic acid, which comes from vitamin B5. The sequence of steps repeated are condensation, reduction, dehydration, and then reduction, and that is cycled seven times. So if you will observe, this is somewhat the opposite reactions in beta oxidation. So again, that's condensation, reduction, dehydration, and reduction. NADPH, which is formed from the pentose phosphate pathway, is required as a donor of hydrogen atoms in the reduction reaction. So let's turn our attention to the image in the right. At number one, you have acetyl coenzyme A. And at number two, you have malonyl coenzyme A. Malonyl receives the acetyl group from number one. And that is the process of condensation. Next, you cause reduction of the ketone group to form an alcohol. Next, you undergo dehydration. You remove the water to form a double bond, still occurring in number two. The last step would be reduction, where you just fill the double bonds with hydrogen. And through this step, you have elongated 
malonyl coenzyme A by two carbons long. Let's now go into the regulation of the pathway. So, as we have understood a while ago, lipogenesis will be stimulated by conditions where there are lots of energy. These conditions are stimulated by insulin. So insulin, which is released after a meal and the high glucose load, will stimulate the liver X receptor and the steroid response element binding protein 1C, which will eventually stimulate acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase, which, if we will remember, is the rate limiting step of lipogenesis. So, what does that mean? If you have insulin secretion, the activity of ACC, acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase, goes up, and the formation of malonyl CoA and fatty acid synthase complex goes up. Glucose will stimulate the carbohydrate response element binding protein, CHRP, which will also stimulate ACC, fatty acid synthase, and other lipogenic enzymes. What if you have low energy? If you have low energy in the fasting state, don't have something to digest, don't have something to absorb, the levels of glucose go down, that will stimulate AMPK, cyclic adenosine monophosphate activated kinase or AMP kinase, which will inhibit the carbohydrate response element binding protein, which will therefore slow down lipolysis. If you have high levels of CAMP, that will also inhibit CHREBP, carbohydrate response element binding protein, and it will slow down ACC or acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. If you have PUFAS, polyunsaturated fatty acids, that will slow down lipogenesis. Now let's turn our attention to the image in the right where our focus is on the key enzyme, the rate-limiting enzyme, acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. Acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase is stimulated by citrate and it is inhibited by the end product palmitic acid coenzyme A or palmitoyl coenzyme A. So what does that mean? If we have lots of citrate, which means the Krebs cycle is very full, which means we have a lot of acetyl coenzyme A that will stimulate acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase so that we can shunt the excess acetyl CoA into the synthesis of fatty acids. And if we have already synthesized lots of fatty acids and we have lots of palmitil CoA or acyl CoA, that will slow down acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase or lipogenesis. That is some form of negative feedback. So that if we have already synthesized the fatty acids, it will slow down further synthesis of fatty acids. Again, AMP activated kinase, which is a sensor of low energy, if activated, will slow down acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. Why? Because the cell is now in a state of low energy and it would be futile or it would be unwise to store energy when you need to catabolize or to break down energy to break down molecules to release energy. Okay? So that is some form also of reciprocal regulation. So through this short lecture, we have understood how fatty acids are synthesized. First, you need to transport acetyl coenzyme A from the mitochondrion into the cytosol through the citrate shuttle. Next, in the cytosol, acetyl coenzyme A with malonyl coenzyme A will be held by fatty acid synthase. And acetyl coenzyme A will be converted to malonyl coenzyme A through 
acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. Then in the fatty acid synthase complex, you have position 1, which holds acetyl CoA, and position 2, which holds malonyl CoA. There will then be condensation reaction, next reduction, and then dehydration, and then another reduction to elongate malonyl coenzyme A by two carbons long. And that will cycle seven times to form palmitic acid. Acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase is stimulated by lots of acetyl coenzyme A, by lots of citrate, by insulin, and it will be inhibited by epinephrine, glucagon, and low levels of acetyl coenzyme A, which will activate AMP kinase. So through this lesson, um, I hope you have understood the fine-tuning of lipogenesis or the synthesis of fatty acids, which are reciprocally regulated together with lipolysis. So if lipolysis is active, lipogenesis is inhibited. If lipogenesis is active, lipolysis is inhibited. Thank you for listening.